And we have a one o'clock appointment with the Friends of East Wheatland. So it's all yours, just turn your mic on and. Okay, so it's pretty old hat. Uh, been here a few times, but we have new counselors. So I'm Catherine Brown, I'm the chair of the Friends of East Wheatland. Uh, if you don't know what we've been doing, although I'm sure you do, over the last four and a half, five years, we've been facilitating the enhancements to the new centralized school. Um, so that's that in a nutshell. This is Natasha Kester, so she's another member. Uh, so last, I don't know what date it was, but we came and we got recreation money, um, uh, $125,000 uh, towards our playground, which is complete and fully paid for. And as I forwarded this to you guys this morning or yesterday, so we, we do have a little bit of money left over. Um, in the amount of forty two thousand five ninety two fifty one uh, that we wanted to know uh, if going forward our what we were hoping we could use it for falls under the criteria that the county has said for recreation so um, we ended up with a extra because we did in fact get our grant from um, the government lotteries program um, so we were covered for sure with a little bit left over. So uh, what we've looked at is finishing our gymnasium, which currently doesn't have a sound system. Uh, we do have a score clock, uh, but um, we would like to put in um, a video wall and professional sound system to facilitate basically anything that goes on within the school during school hours and our uh, outside use by uh, the public and um, any tournaments so on so uh, the amount for that uh, for the install and all the equipment is 75,000 and we do uh, have enough uh, if the county approves the remainder we do have enough to pay for that completely finished and installed so that's where we are now <laughs> thank you does anyone have any questions Ellen Do you want to bring up the ongoing uh, yeah, well, sure. <laughs> So I am not, uh, I'm not sure where we at. I think we have one payment that's been made already. So we, uh, when we brought uh, our request forward to complete the gymnasium, we did get uh, 250,000 from the county to finish the gymnasium. And then we do have plans for a um, fitness center, um, which would be joint use between the county and and the school division. Uh, so I'm not sure where we are in that process yet because it's kind of mm -hmm. now the board's dealing with blueprints and stuff. So, But we do have a, an agreement for 125,000 from the county moving forward. And I believe the first payment was for 17 and then I, total four payments. I'll is that ask correct? Alan, do you know how many payments we've made? Or? There's one one payment made in 2017 for okay. 25,000 and then the next four years. So, okay. Right. So Catherine, how much money have you raised you and your group to pay for all these over and above all the things that we all put into the it, school? Yeah. Uh, it, I believe it's over a million. I believe, um, when you factor in all the grant money, the county's contribution and then everything else that's been raised. Okay. So do you have a number of, uh, support from the citizens that live, yes, live in the county? Yeah, yeah. they're uh, completely on board actually. Well, our playground is obviously well received. It's been, been uh, actually I've had other schools call me personally that are planning on building playgrounds, asking for input and how we went about planning it. And the fact that it is accessible for wheelchair and special needs kids. So that was going forward. They were pretty excited and wanted to know how we did mm -hmm. went about that. We worked with a really great company um, and they're still supportive even after the fact check in to say, you know, is everything going good? So it's it's a really nice playground <laughs> The kids love it yeah. public loves it so. I don't I know when I went there. I think you have a whole bucket full of Tonka toys. Oh, yeah, we did that yeah. was uh, has our fishing game donated 
um, all the Tonka trucks for the kids to play with on the other side there. So, yeah. and our and our facility, like our gymnasium, has been used at least three times for tournaments for volleyball already. Um, and we've heard a lot of great feedback. Mm -hmm. So, with the addition of the sound system and the the LED screen would be would okay. be nice for that. So, yeah. sir, okay. any other questions or Ben? Excuse me, through the chair. So this letter that you've sent where you're asking us to reallocate the 42 out of that, that came out of the municipal reserve, right? Uh, no, where did that, that, that initially came from? A portion of it did, yes. Because when, uh, under the MGA, isn't it, in, under the MGA, once we allocate that municipal reserve, we can't dictate how it's used. No, I don't know if it specifically says in the MGA you can't dictate. It's being used for recreation, so. Yeah. It's being used for the intended purpose. It's yeah, just not so the intended purpose that originally it was. It was earmarked for the uh, playground originally, right? So that's why they're here today to, yeah, to ask I council to consider that. that. I was just, because I know there was some issue around that a couple of years ago when the previous councillor brought something up there, but on, under the MGA, it did state that that municipal reserve, once it was allocated to the to the uh, corresponding school, then we lost we we lost control of that money. We had no control over what it was spent on. So we might need to want to check that out. Staff have any issue real allocating this money? Would it be expensive? Well, the intended use was for the playground. Right. So that would be a council motion required to reallocate it to the scorecard. Right or the, the LED uh, video and digital system. We do have an ongoing commitment for the gymnasium, or the uh, workout mm -hmm. area, I should say. So, just so that council is aware. Additionally, uh, council had, uh, the previous council had put money into the site prep. So I don't know if you wanted to talk about that, all the costs that have kind of gone into this project. So, just so that the new councillors understand the mm -hmm. whole picture, right? Because this is only one component of it. Yeah, it is only one. When the new, I don't know if I'm the one to do this or not. When the new school wanted to be built, they come to us and they wanted the land because municipalities provide land and we didn't have any land. But every time there's a subdivision in the county, we collect 10% in grant in lieu of land. We take cash. It's a appraised and uh, that money gets put in the bank and it's our MR money, Municipal Reserve. Municipal Reserve can only be spent on schools and parks and infrastructure such as that. So when the school come, council said we would give them some MR money. We uh, prepped the site and uh, paved the road and that was all part of and how much, I don't know how it all shook down, how the MR was spent, and but that was to get the school there. You have to appreciate when, say, Strathmore gets a school built there, yeah, they got the land, but the, the services are running right by the door. The, it's built into the new development, and uh, usually the land, when they get their 10% of their of their subdivision, they're no different than us. They got all them houses contributing and stores, and that's how the school land is to be I mean, a place, for a school site to be built, right? So then the friends of Weast Wheatland come in, and they wanted uh, an enhancement. They wanted to have a facility where they could use something after hours by the residents. They wanted. Uh, something that was a little was more than what the province built in the schools they wanted bleachers they wanted playground i'm thinking but even though they did fund for it in the end they wanted a kitchen they wanted uh fitness facilities and and they were busy is there any more catherine maybe you can fill in a little bit yeah, there Oh, sorry. <laughs> to facilitate having um, tournaments 
something mm -hmm. that our kids our kids in our schools had never seen before we would we wouldn't have the opportunity to host them uh, so having a larger gymnasium and the bleachers there for parents to come and watch their kids in the public and um, and then yeah we did do the kitchen and that um, I want to say that the kitchen in the end did come out of the budgeted money that the government gave us for the school because it had to be put in the blueprints and all that prior to mm -hmm. us deciding if we had the the amount of money to pay for it so because um, that all had to, the lines the gas lines and all that kind of stuff so uh, and the playground which in our province costs a heck of a lot of money <laughs> which we found out um, so yeah that in itself I think and then we're still on playing field uh, I think we're I think we're just about finished there they sawed okay. it before the snow flew so so the money you got or you raised was for enhancements of the school right right yeah. and I don't know what the county committed probably 600 ish yeah I'm thinking you, yeah, when we total it all up in my head something yeah. like that Close to that, yeah. So then when Strathmore come along for their new school, after talking and stuff, we jointly said, well, well after t t negotiating, we would uh, jointly do their field house there, and we committed $3 million the infrastructure up front. And how much a year for maintenance, selling? Well, we've budgeted seventy-five thousand dollars, but basically the agreement says thirty percent of any loss would be oh, okay. incurred by the county. But yeah. This year, obviously, twenty seventeen, it never got operational, so there's no loss there it won't this be year. Much. Twenty eighteen, there will be a small loss. But and if I th remember right, I think the field house is around ten million. And we put in three. Uh, town put in five, and the school put in two. And uh, historically, counties, uh, what is the percentage they were thinking that the county kids would be in Strathmore? Anyway, I th we, we, we well put in our share for sure. We, weren't, we didn't. We were way over for sure. Like, I'm thinking 40% or 35%. Yeah, it was enough. I don't know if my miss out leave out anything, Ben, or off the top of my head. Alan, can you fill it in? No, I don't think so. It was originally there was I can't remember exactly what the total was we had in the MR, but we were keeping twenty five percent back for our parks and, and the things that we had in the county. The rest was set aside for the mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think the, I think the school got 800000 out of that for their first kick, but we were looking at more than that at, at, at the end date. That was just the first first one, so I don't have any problem with what they're asking. But <clears throat> Yeah, so just to elaborate on Councillor Armstrong's comments, so as far as the school, there is a school component and there's a recreation component, so that's two different things. So when you're talking the 800, that was the first payment, then there was another 600000 made. That was for site work on the school. So it ends up to be about around 1.4 million was, was spent on site work, which is, uh, Reef Kester had mentioned, if it was in the town of Strathmore, they'd give them the land, they'd service it right to the door and all that. So essentially that's what we have to do in order to secure a school in uh, the province of Alberta with the system the way it is. So over and above that, there's the recreation component for the gymnasium, the playground, and now the request for the LED and then the ongoing commitment to the uh, to the workout area, fitness area, which totals, I think you'd said around 600,000, which is probably pretty close, I think. So it's so all told, we're probably into it for about 2 million, all told. And all of the county kids go to that school. How much was MR money, Do, can you remember? Yeah. Certainly the 1.4 million was all MR. And then there was a two hundred fifty thousand dollar allocation, from my recollection, straight out MR, and then the remainder come out of general mm -hmm. general funds, from my recollection. Yeah. In Strathmore, the three million that was committed to the field house, we financed through that through grants, provincial grants. Sorry, essentially, right. and uh, five hundred thousand through federal gas taxes. So, 
Okay. Any questions? Donna. Does the fitness center, is it open to the public? It will be, yeah. It'll be um, joint use between the general public within the county and the Golden Hill School Division. That was our kind of mandate moving forward is we wanted to offer something there for us out in the county area in, in Wheatland um, East. Particularly, um, our thoughts and our hopes were that moving forward, that would be a place for um, our seniors to use for um, rehabilitation, um, physio. We wanted to, our hopes were to have, uh, I believe Alberta Health Services were behind us in getting a physio out there so that our seniors don't have to travel so far um, into the town of Strathmore to have that stuff done. And then also um, cardiac rehab as well. So it would be used by the public. Okay. Sure. So that facility isn't built yet? No. That's coming in the future, the fitness area? And do you, I don't know if we know have an exact timeline on that. I don't, 2019, I, yeah. I think, was original. Um, 2019, 2020, yeah. I think it's original, what they were thinking. And we do have a, a use agreement with Golden Hills, the county does, as well as, I believe, Strathmore Schools, too. So there was a question that Tom just asked me. The, uh, <clears throat> when Alan said that all the county kids go to that school, they are all county kids. Some of our county, the children in the county go to Drumheller. They're in the Catholic system, and they get busing paid for to go down there. If there's any of the public that go down there, they don't, they don't get the busing paid for unless they ride on the Catholic bus. So any of the ones in, the municipal, in this municipality, if they want to ride the bus, or if they want to go to anywhere other than that school in that busing area, they have to pay their own busing unless they're in a Catholic system. Mm -hmm. I think my comment was more about all the kids in that school are from the county. From the county in Strathmore, yeah. certain percentage are from the county, but more are from Strathmore. That's that's what that was my point there. So for the county to fund that, they're funding their own, essentially for their own residents, totally. And I've heard there's some people, some kids from Strathmore being parents driving them over to go to school. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if... It's by. I know it's more than 420. I'm sure it's more than 420, and that's K to 12, like total. So um, there is, it's a healthy number. Like mm -hmm. our, our graduation classes are getting bigger, you can see as you go down. So yeah. there's definitely more kids. Um, and they're thriving in there. Um, another thing, too, and as it says in, in the um, write up from Sean, uh, that is completely user friendly. So it would be like if anybody wanted to come in and use the screen and the sound system, it's plug and play pretty much. You'd plug in your laptop or um, so it's not complicated for sure. Okay. Donna? So how many schools is the county? So you have the Wheatland East or Wheatland Crossing. Yeah. And we have Carsland. What other schools is there? That's it? Just the two? Gleeson doesn't have one then? No. Galician, Standard, Hazar, Rocky Ford, all those schools went together to form Wheatland East. Any other questions? I think we need to recognize the efforts of the group there to raise oh, sure. the amount of money that they raised mm -hmm. in a short amount of time. Um, I don't know where Strathmore is at with their fundraising, but they're not quite close to what you guys are so and they have a bigger population really, so kudos to you guys lots of hard-working people actually in that playground uh, we we did it in was it five or six days and we had over a thousand hours of volunteer time um, from residents and we got over 36 hours of donated um, skid steer from local businesses so I mean right down to moms that had babies at home brought their babies out and popsicles on those hot days to, mm -hmm. you know, we had um, actually Strathmore uh, Credit Union sponsored us and brought us Tim Hortons every day. So it was a very, very well organized group of volunteers and pretty amazing to see that come together in that amount of time. So. 
I know when you come first come here for money, you had already had a substantial amount of it raised before you even come to the county. Yeah, our first year we had a really successful year, mm. and then it, well, it was that economic kind of crash happened. <laughs> yeah. It's a bad time to start a society, <laughs> but we uh, yeah, I, I fundraisers. I, we were over sixty thousand just in one evening fundraiser. So yeah, um, it was. And when Strathmore come. They never even thought of fundraising. I don't think. I don't know if they're how their fundraising efforts are going, but yeah, they've that, they've uh, had a name the thing, name the facility. I think they raise money there and a couple other places, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I met with the Town of Strathmore representatives last week. They're going to come to council in the new year to explain where they're at with the fundraising, okay. but it's not close to where the Wheatland Crossing school folks are. So, can you just? give council an idea where this your society is going in the future if you, if you got a bit of an idea I think you do um, so <laughs> because well, I don't think they're point, disbanding we're just kind of like tie everything up with a nice bow and it's we've gotten to where uh, we're comfortable we met all our goals that we set out to reach um, mm -hmm. I believe that it is I'm not involved in school council anymore because I did that forever and I kind of was like okay I'm gonna take a take a step back but I believe that school council has the um, the desire to take over the fundraising portion for the school so instead of having multiple groups doing it um, a lot of our members that are currently on our board are also parent council members so it would just kind of be mm -hmm. amalgamated into one moving forward and they would handle the rest of like I believe there's like wish lists for lighting in that drama space. Um, we were looking at um, curtains on raw, like movable curtains on rod structures that can be actually moved from that small drama space into the gymnasium for bigger productions. Um, yeah, mostly just a few little things mm -hmm. here and there, but a lot of stuff falls under um, programming, which then frees us up to use our casino money um, for any school programming stuff but that kind of stuff like lighting and and that would be um, we'd have to raise funds for that so there's a little bit of work still to be done but for the most part it's we've gotten to where we've achieved all the goals that mm -hmm. we set out to begin with yeah okay thanks any questions Wow Hmm? Yeah, if council wants to make a motion or you you want to think about it for a while, it's up to it's up to council. Scott. I'll make the motion that we let them proceed with the remaining forty two thousand five hundred ninety two dollars and fifty one cents for their project. Okay. Is there any questions? All in favor? Carried. Thank you Thank for you coming very in. Much. Yeah, we motion. just wanted to be trans, you know, transparent right. about what we had left yeah. over and make sure that we involved you guys as far as letting us know. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of a lot of it comes down to um, you know how families you know stretch themselves out like I know a lot of people like their both parents work full-time mm -hmm. they just don't have the time to put into that sort of a project um, not to say that we didn't have a lot of parents that work full-time we have really busy families and I for one my my family was like mom Please tell me you're not going to another meeting because <laughs> we did meet every single week for the first year of that project so it's an immense amount of volunteer time that you just you have to make a commitment to it and follow it through I guess we just had the desire and there was history too I think our four communities that worked on the board had the desire to absolutely see it through and make it work whereas I think history played a Part in that we really wanted to make a point and say that it, we could do it and that it was possible and mm -hmm. that it would be extremely successful so 
Well, thanks again. Thank you for having us for, uh, again. <laughs> yeah. A motion to accept for information. All in favor? Jason. So I think all we have left is in camera, I think. Then. Okay, motion to go on camera. Tom, all in favor? Carried. Okay, any questions? All in favor? Carried. And motion to adjourn. Ben, all in favor? Oh. The population in the growth management board oh, okay. is 1,351. Okay. I just have to get to my desk to get it for you. Yeah, I'd ask them. That's correct. Yeah. 1351 for information. And then the other information that I wanted to provide is the RCMP policing priority survey that we did last year. I'm going to give you that just to give you an idea of what we asked last year. Um, please respond with any questions you want to have asked. We had some say in the questions on this, but I want to have more say in them this year. Okay. It's our survey. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? <laughs> Adjourned. Thank you. Margaret? Ben.